Hello again, everybody. So we're going to go through a differential calculus question. This one involves an exponential function and also a product. Uh, it was worth 13 marks, so therefore we should be able to complete it in 13 minutes or less. I do think that seems quite high for this question, but we're, we'll, we'll see as we go through. It featured in an IB paper, a standard level paper, but would feature in higher level um, AP Calc or um, an A-level course, any higher driven uh, calculus course. So take a picture. <laughs> Have a go at it and then check back with me. Other than that, we will start the clock and I will start going through the problems. Okay, off we go. So h of x is given by this expression here. Find the value of the y-intercept. So when we do that, we just want to substitute the value of x is equal to 0 into this function. So part A of the question is, what is h of 0? That means we're substituting x is 0 into that. Well, that whole expression is going to be 0 here because uh, we're multiplying through by zero and plus three. So the y-intercept is actually three. So if you had to give a coordinate, it would be zero, three. Okay, part B of the question. Find the derivative um, of this function. So h prime of x. Well, we are. Uh, if we go back up to the function here, we can call this u and this v. Okay, and then we have the three, which will disappear when we differentiate a constant. So what I'll do just before I start doing that is let me label up what u is. u is 2x, u prime is 2, and v is equal to e to the x. And if you see my other video, the derivative of e to the x will just be e to the x times 1. So it will just stay as e to the x. Okay, putting all of this into product rule, which will be v du by dx plus u dv by dx. Okay, so we're going to substitute all of these values into here. So over here on the left, I'm going to put those in to this formula, right? Starting with v. So v is e to the x, du is two plus u, which is two x. Now be careful, make sure you keep that in brackets, times by dv by dx, which is e to the x. And don't forget that the derivative of this three will just go to zero because the derivative of a constant will um, go to zero, leaving us with a grand total of two e to the x plus two x e to the x. Now we can't quite combine those terms just yet because um, uh, they're, they're not of like terms, two e to the x and two x e to the x. So let's move on to the next part. So we've done a and b. Hence, find the coordinates of A. So if we go over to the diagram and have a look at A, A is actually what we call a turning point. So a turning point is when the gradient, so y prime, um, is, is, is equal to zero, right? So we want the derivative of y with respect to x to equal zero at that point. The gradient is zero. So if you draw a tangent at a, it will be zero. So if we go over to here then, uh, what we'll do is we'll start part C. It says find the coordinate of a. So we want to equate our gradient function here, what we just found, to zero. So zero is equal to 2e to the x plus 2x e to the x. Now, in order to do this, what you don't want to do is div divide through by like an x term or an e to the x because what you'll potentially do is lose one of the solutions. So what I'll do is I'll factorize this up into e to the x. Um, and then we have 2 plus 2x. Okay. Now, this value e to the x on the outside can never actually equal zero because anything like any power Okay, so I'll just put a to the x here. This this can never equal zero if the base is not zero because if it's a negative, it will be one over, and if it's a positive, it will just increase. Or or uh, it, it, this just cannot be equal to zero. Okay, that is uh, for another time. So what we want to do is we want to look at when this bracket here is equal to zero. So we'll go down and set this up to equal zero. Therefore, two is equal to minus two x. Therefore, x is equal to minus 1. So the coordinate of a will be minus 1. And then we have just found, uh, oh, we don't actually know the y. Oh, so, so we need to substitute that 1 into the original function. Okay, so that's good. So I'm going to take that minus 1 and I'm going to substitute it into the original function. So if we go up to here, I'm going to take that minus 1 and substitute it into this. So this would be 2 times minus 1e 
to the minus 1 plus 3. Okay, so that would be equal to negative 2. Uh, e to the minus 1 is 1 over E, okay, plus 3. So that is the value of the Y. Now, without a calculator, I'd have to leave it as an exact value like that. So negative 2 over E plus 3. So negative 2 over E plus 3, close bracket, and that is the coordinate of A, okay? So we've had to leave it in terms of E. If we go up to the question part, so we've answered C, show that the second derivative is equal to the following. Okay, uh, because I'm doing this on a iPad, I'm just gonna copy that down here. Wouldn't do this in an exam, but just so we can do it uh, and you can see what's happening here. So this is part D, I. So the second derivative has to equal this. Well, the first derivative, don't forget, is uh, this, so it was h prime of x was equal to 2e to the x plus 2x e to the x. So if we wanted to perform the second derivative or find the second derivative, we will have to use product rule again. So this will be u and v. So u would equal 2x and u prime would equal 2. v would equal e to the x and v prime, let's make sure that looks like a v and not a u, v prime is equal to e to the x. Okay, so we're going to perform product rule on this, which is the same thing again. It's v du over dx plus u dv, okay, dx. And let's do that on the left now. So I'll do this in orange. So the second derivative, h double prime of x, is now this expression will stay exactly the same. It's not a product, it's just a constant times e to the x. And we know that the derivative of e to the x stays as e to the x. But this uh, that I'm drawing a sort of a squiggly uh, cloud around. Okay, this is where we need to uh, apply the product rule. So I'm going to use the terms over here that I'm putting a star next to um, because we need to plug them into product rule. So uh, plus, now let's apply product rule, v, which is e to the x, du, which is 2, plus u, which is 2 to the x, dv, which is e to the x. Okay, so if we tidy all of that up, we've got 2e to the x plus another 2e to the x, plus a 2x e to the x. So these two com terms combined would equal 4e to the x plus 2x e to the x. And if you recall, what we're trying to uh, get our question to look like is 2x plus 4e to the x. So we can just take out a factor of e to the x here. So e to the x, open brackets, 4 plus 2x, and I have exactly what I was required to in the question, except my e to the x is in front of the bracket and not behind, but as it's a product, it is the same value. Okay, part two of D, so DII, if we go back up here, again, what I'll do is just for the purpose of this video, I will just copy this question and put it down so you can see it without me flicking back and forth. Okay, find the values for x for which the graph is concave up. Okay, so this is a part of the course where you had to remember that the second derivative of something, so the second derivative of x, whether, like what does it mean if it's less than zero or greater than zero, okay? So what I do is I often rotate these expressions, okay, uh, this way, and you'll see why I do that in just a moment, is this a good way of remembering what's what. So when I rotate them this way, I can see that this is like a concave down nature, and this is a concave up nature. Now just remember, you must always rotate them clockwise, okay? So that is one quick way, which I'll make a short video on. So if we want to have the concave up nature, that is when the second derivative is greater than zero. Okay, so I'm going to say that there now. Okay, so a concave up, which is a minimum, means that the second derivative of x has to be greater than zero. Okay, just based on that little silly like uh, way of remembering there. So the second derivative has to be greater than or equal to zero. So if we go up and we bring down our second derivative here, so uh, that is e to the x, open brackets, 4 plus 2x, okay, has to be greater than or equal to zero, okay? Now, this expression e to the x will always be greater than zero, okay? Because e is a positive number, 
And depending on what X is, if it, X was zero, this whole expression would be one. If X was positive, then E would increase exponentially. If E was negative, then it would be just one over E, whatever, it, if it was negative, let's say two, be one over E squared, for example. So this would just still be a positive number. So I just want to express that this E to the X will always be positive. So we don't need to worry about that. What we do need to worry about is when is four plus two X negative or positive. So what we'll do now is let's figure out when 4 plus 2x is actually equal to 0 first. So 4 plus 2x is equal to 0 when, okay, we divide both sides by 2, um, when x is 2. So sometimes what I do here is I draw a sign diagram and I just mark down, okay, when x is minus 2, so on the denominator, just imagine, sorry, not the, the bottom of the line, uh, that, that value would be zero. Now, what happens if we move to the right of two? So let's just test the value. What happens if uh, we substitute in minus one or zero or any value to the right of negative two? So think of this as being a number line. Well, if we plug in any value to the right, um, then this expression will be positive. Any value, you can test it. So I can see that the values to the right would be positive. And any value to the left of two, so try plugging in minus 3 or minus 4 or minus 10 or minus 100 into this, we can see that that expression would be negative. So that's what we don't want, okay? We want the expression to be greater than or equal to, sorry, greater than 0, okay? So therefore then my final answer is that for all values for x greater than minus 2, we would have a concave up shape. And that is the end of the question. Stop the clock. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel to see more math tutorials. Check out my playlist on my channel or click one of the videos above. I'll see you next time.